A Burglar's Guide to the City is a book aimed for studying architecture the way a burglar would. The author, Jeff Manigo, takes readers through walls, down elevator shafts, into panic rooms and out across the rooftop of an unsuspecting city. The book includes nearly 2,000 years of heists and break-ins. It draws on the expertise of reformed bank robbers, FBI special agents, private securities consultants, the LAPD Air Support Division, and architects past and present. Whether picking locks, climbing the walls of a high-rise apartments, finding gaps in a museum's surveillance routine, or discussing home invasions in ancient Rome, A Burglar's Guide to the City ensures readers will never enter a bank again without imagining how to loot the vault or walk down the street without planning the perfect gateway. In this video, we will be reading one of the first chapters from this book, giving you a general idea about what the author is trying to demonstrate. Jeff was even kind enough to offer a free copy for one of you guys. Wait till the end of this video to know more on how you can participate. This reading was suggested by our friend Nice, founder of The Vomitorium, a visual and engaging blog where she handles historical architecture topics. You can find the link to her blog down in the description. We highly recommend her blog posts. Before we begin, make sure you are subscribed to our channel for more readings like this. And we truly hope you would consider joining our Patreon to help us keep moving forward with our content. You could also benefit from lots of offers such as giving you a one-on-one -on -one lesson on animations and rendering. Click the link down in the description to know the details. And now, let us investigate. In one sense, burglars seem to understand architecture than the rest of us. They misuse it, pass through it, and ignore limitations a building tries to impose. Burglars do not need doors. They'll punch holes through walls or slice down through ceilings instead. Burglars unpeel a building from the inside out to hide inside the drywall or underneath the flipboards or up in the trusses of an unlit crawl space. They are masters of architecture origami, demonstrating skills the rest of us only wish we had. We can call them the dark wizards of the city, unlimited by laws that hold the rest of us in. Burglars seem to exist in matrix space, a world where to paraphrase worlds on metaphysics. Not only is there no door, but there are no walls, roofs, or ceiling. Burglary in this sense is a world of dissolving the walls and pop up entryways through to other worlds, or at least through to other rooms and buildings. After all, if two rooms aren't connected now, they will be Soon. If there is no route from one building to another, a burglar will find a way. Even if it means digging the tunnel between the two using discarded mining equipment picked up for cheap in California. Burglars reveal with often eye-popping brutality how buildings can really be used. They introduce pre-forations, holes, cut and other willful misconnections. It is as if they are sculpturing a building in reverse. For the burglar, every building is infinite, endlessly weaving back into itself through meshed gears made of fire escapes and secondary stairways, window frames, and screened-in porches. Pet doors and ventilation shafts, everything interpenetrating, everything mixed together in a fantastic knot. Rooms and halls coiled together like dragons inside of dragons or snakes eating their own tails. Rooms opening onto every Every other room in the city. For the burglar, doors are everywhere. When we see locks and alarms, they see MC Esther. In another sense, however, burglars are idiots. Incapable of using a door when cutting through drywall for 20 minutes will do the trick, but then they will get stuck in the insulation, or they'll trip and plummet through the roof into a wrong grocery store, or they'll accidentally set fire to the very place they're trying so hard to enter. You'd be excused for thinking burglars have absolutely no idea how to use the built environment. It's like a perceptual disorder in which certain people cannot longer distinguish solid surface from open surface, door from wall. So, lashing out against a world they don't fully understand, burglars knock holes in the sides of the building, 
or they rattle through skylights using tactical mountaineering ropes. Instead of just opening the front door, they could simply walk inside, but no. Like someone who doesn't know how to program a VCR, burglars fumble, curse, and hit all the wrong buttons. Mistaking doorknobs for something they're meant to avoid, breaking glass, crawling through doggy doors, and displaying incredible acts of spatial ignorance. As if they're somehow incapable of getting from one side of the room to the other without injuring themselves or others. But maybe it's not their fault. Maybe no one ever taught them how to use a building. We created a term for this. Burglar's syndrome. A spatial disease. Something that compels you to misuse buildings. But let's settle instead on a middle ground and say it's a combination of the two extremes. Burglars are idiot masters of the built environment, drunk Jedi's of architecture space. Today, nearly 150 years later, burglary and architecture still go hand in hand. If you look closely, from just the right angle, every city implies the crimes that will someday take place there. Burglary is designed into the city as truly as your morning commute. In order to win a free copy of this incredible book, make sure to follow these simple rules. Subscribe to our channel, like this video, comment down below a burglar's guide, and follow us on Instagram to increase your chances of winning. That's it for today's reading everyone, if you liked this book please comment if you want us to do more reading sessions from this book or from any other book you would like to recommend down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe and like this video, follow us on Instagram for daily facts and trivia about buildings and architects. We wish you all the best and we will see you in the next one.